your SaaS company can make more money with better UX writing. What is UX writing? Hi, I'm Jerry Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast, and today I'm speaking with Yuval Ketcher, who is a tech entrepreneur with a background in UX design. Now, today he hosts the Writers in Tech podcast and runs the UX Writing Hub and UX Writing Academy, which is an extensive program and the world's first and only UX writing boot camp. The UX Writing Academy has helped hundreds of professionals transition to UX writing and content design to increase the performance and the revenue of SaaS companies and apps. In this podcast episode, Yuval and I specifically talk about what UX writing is and what UX design is and how it, some of it's similar to copywriting, but also what are the key differences between that and copywriting. Yuval also gives us some examples of how good UX writing and design is used for SaaS companies and apps to increase the value for the user allowing that user to stay longer and also push those users to upgrade and earn the business more money. So UX writing and UX design is so imperative for a good SaaS company. We also got to talk about some simple UX design strategies that can make your app or your software much more intuitive, much more easy to use, fun for your users, thus keeping users for longer, which equals more money for your business as well. This is a great episode if you're looking to improve your SaaS business or your app to ensure you can decrease churn, increase retention, and make more money. Enjoy. Yuval, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Jerry. That was very excited to be invited here today. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this chat because UX content, U user experience, abbreviation UX. We're going to talk about UX content today. We're going to talk about UX writing, UX design. And before I hit record buttons, I asked you a question. A lot of people listening to this podcast episode are going to think about like, hang on, user UX content. They get the UX design. I guess we could probably talk a little bit to that. We'll probably be diving into more UX content. And people are probably thinking how... What is UX content? What are some examples of how UX content has evolved and how has that helped people grow their revenue? That's what people listening to this are wanting to do. They're wanting to buy a business and then, then grow the income of that business. So let's kind of start with what is UX writing? Like what is that? What even is that? <laughs> All right. So that's a really good question. I would say that UX writing is... Um... If we have the umbrella that we can call user experience, so when um, UX writing will be a niche, it would be something that will sit under that umbrella. Mm. And we have user experience, which is, okay, so you bought an app, you bought a website, and there is a whole experience that your customers are facing. There is the customer support aspect, which is also part of the experience. There is the visual aspects, which is, okay, what is uh, like how the screens are organized and there is also the communication aspect of your website and your app and that would consider to be the ux writing means that let's say right now that you just sign up to a new app and you need to do some kind of an onboarding for that app because you need to know how to use it so the people that are creating that app will um not only design, but also write copy that will teach you how to use that app uh, during the onboarding experience. And that copy would also consider to be uh, UX writing. Now, the reason it's really, really important for your business is because, okay, let's say that you've built this SaaS app, software as a service, and this is an app that help you to um, schedule meetings like Calendly, for example. Yeah. So you sign up to Calendly. The mission of the people that's creating Calendly is that obviously you'll pay them uh, and maybe buy more and more seats mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, on a monthly basis, so recurring revenue. This is what they're looking for. And uh, they figure out, figured out that based on their data, people that finish the onboarding have 20% more likelihood to actually end up paying to the app. So then you would like to focus your energy to communicate and also design the experience of that onboarding. So eventually uh, people would end up paying to you. So you will increase 
the amount of people that end up finishing the onboarding because of the thing that you just learned from the data. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that makes sense. But basically, that's what the UX learning is all about. And you can meet it with a lot of different parts of your app. You can meet it when you have an error message that is not communicated or communicated in a good way. You can meet it with confirmation messages, notifications, uh, and basically everywhere in your app or website where you communicate yourself to your end user or client. So that's more or less what UX writing is all about. Okay, so UX writing is is basically good copywriting that gets people to, I guess, take an action, a further action towards either sale or engagement and, and, and create. I mean, I guess it's going to create more engagement. So how, why, why the term UX, for example, user design, user experience, writing is it is it based on connecting with people's emotions more or based on them understanding more about the product or the service like just i want to i just don't get it like i want to understand it a bit more <laughs> perfect those are are great questions so let's start with the term ux writing some yep. people and some companies call it content design and some companies, as you said, call it UX content. Uh, some companies call it product writing like Netflix. But at the end of the day, uh, these are the people that are in charge of communicating the app. And there is a lot of overlap between what the U UX designer is doing and what the UX writer uh, is doing. Uh, and to those of you that are not familiar with the work of the UX folks, the UX designer and the UX writer, there's a lot of psychological aspects to that work. Uh, a lot of people coming to these fields from psychology and the other um, writing industries. Yeah, so prior to the writing, like 90% of the work is not about writing. It's about <laughs> research, studying, yeah. research, learning your users, talking to your users, understanding their pain points, which is very similar to copywriting, right? It's not uh, different than copywriting. What yeah. is a bit different than copywriting is the context of your word. There's a very big difference if you are write a sentence or a phrase in a very specific part of the app or with the way that you name a feature in an app um then writing for example a converting email or converting product page there is a difference though why because your user have different type of mindsets when they're using different types of apps for example give me for example your favorite app that is not a social media platform uh i don't use social media platform apps that's perfect uh <laughs> probably it's a it's a surfing app where you can watch yeah. live surfing competitions. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So you have this surfing app and, yeah. um, which is some kind of a small digital media company, I'd say. Correct. Um, there are a lot of features in that app uh, and the way also that you consume and use this app is varies between different, uh, things that you're doing, for example, you could watch it in the bathroom or you can watch it while you commute or um, you can watch it in your office. Mm. Um, and I, I'm not familiar with this specific app and I don't know exactly what kind of features do they have except from just doing the live stream. I don't know if there is like communicational aspect in that app uh, and whatnot. So they have like, they have different things yeah. where you can read articles, like have a blog section, they have like where you can watch recorded videos. They also have a section where you can play fantasy, a fantasy surfing league uh, and a mm, bunch of different amazing. things on the app. So yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in it. And do you pay them or do some users pay for them? Uh, no, it's a free app. And they're doing money out of ads, I believe. Yeah. Okay, cool. So their goal is to create traffic that would be so engaging so that the people that pay them to promote their ads, probably surfing related ads, I assume, they, they're trying to create some kind of a growth and retention so people will stay. So they mostly in charge of mostly the content of the app should be really, really good. If it's That's like right. the surfing link or if it's like the live stream, 
and they probably build some kind of a community around that. Um, I would take another example of, uh, let's say that we're using some kind of a B2B dashboard, if it's like an email marketing tool or this HR tool or, or invoicing tool. So those tools could be very complicated to use. Okay, you need to learn how to use them. It takes some time. There is some kind of a learning curve and better writing at the end of the day help you to educate you through this type of products and eventually make sure that you'll be hooked to use them. Not hooked in the way that you'll be, you know, um, addicted to it, but hooked in the way that like that will be your only solution for your business. And the better the education that they will have for you, the more effective it will be for their business and the more seats you'll end up buying. And the more, uh, the better their business basically is going to be. Um, okay, so it sounds like user yeah. design and user writing is best for an app or a software where people are already pay, already using a free version or a paid version and getting them to pay more or stay longer rather than getting people to make an initial purchase. Is that, what you, is that what you specialize in, is in, in that area? Yeah, so... It's not necessarily means that uh, it's only about retention uh, and so on, because you have a lot of overlap uh, between UX writing and marketing writing, and you can find yourself writing also e-commerce and helping people to make a, you know, a purchase. You can see it very clearly on the website, also like booking.com that they have fantastic team of UX writers. So what's the difference between uh, UX writing and copywriting? I don't. I don't understand the difference. Imagine that you have a surfing, a surfing store, like a real surfing store. Yeah. Physical okay. Surfing store. Phys yep. Yeah. So you're going to that store and then you uh, end up talking to a salesperson and that salesperson know everything about the board is like, yep. you know, how to tell you, Hey, this is the features of yep. the surf and you, you should have it. If you're that kind of person that looking for that kind of experience, they will sell you basically the, the product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. But then you got the product and it's laying in your bedroom, but now we, you need to use it. Okay. And then you go to this surfing instructor or like surfing school and those people take you to the ocean. They teach you how to use your surfer. They teach you how to balance yourself. They teach you how to take the product that you just got and make the best out of it. Okay. So that would be the difference between a UX writer and a copywriter. The copywriter would be the salesperson that will explain you pretty much aggressively, not aggressively, yeah. but more aggressively with their tone, how to use it. Uh, and the UX writer will be the instructor that will, that will help you to make the best out of your product. Okay. Makes sense? I get it. I get it. So it sounds like UX writing is a tool to retain customers longer on, on, on a software, on a SaaS company or on an app. User experience in general, just, um, let's say that you're using this, you're a customer for a bank and you, this bank have an app and you're using this app and from one, from some reason. You, you're looking for a very specific feature in that banking app and um, like taking a loan or sending money to your friend. It's not clear to you as a user how to do it. It's, it's a bit complicated. So because it's complicated, it takes some cognitive load. It makes you think and people don't yeah. like to think anymore. People like seamless experience where everything goes smoothly. Yep. And then your friend is telling you about this other bank that everything is digital and everything is seamless. Everything is simple. And then you're like, okay, fuck it. I want to, I'm going to move to another bank now and to the bank that give me the better experience with their app. So you move mm. to another app. Okay. So that's a case for better business for the bank that created the better app. Gotcha. Because, because at the end of the day, people are looking for the fastest way, seamless way, the, the most convenient way to do mm. stuff. And the most yep. of the stuff we do is online. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love that. That's, that's a really good example, how a business can earn more money and retain clients and generate more users via good UX writing and user design. You know, what, what, what are the top three things that like 
if somebody was to had an app or had a, a, so, a software, say they got a software as a service business, right? So they got a SaaS business. What are some of the top three things that people can do with their UX writing to improve their connection and, and communication with their with their members? All right. So first of all, UX writing goes really well with UX design, as I said before. Uh, mm. Because it's not only about the words, it's the user journey and the way that the um, journey is organized it means that the UX writer and also the UX designer, but also the UX writer would be in charge of how things are organized around your app. So uh, it would be the easiest as possible for the user to perform a task. So one of the most important things would be um, to design an actual UX writers are designers uh, and to design a flow that would make sure that the user would perform tasks that you as a business would like them to do. Okay. So that's one <laughs> designing the experience. So it would make sense to the end user and be clear to them. Another effective thing that the UX writer can do to an app is to delight a user. Okay. So let's say that we have some kind of, there, there are things that I like to call them happy moments in an app. So if we talked about like a banking app, so uh, there are some not so happy moments where you just understood that you own money or have like shortage in money, which is okay. Now we need to create empathy with the end user because, because we need to be clear and on point and people can be very sensitive about money. Right? So Correct. We, yeah. as UX writers, we need to be extremely sensitive and and be clear in this specific scenario. On the contrary, I just said before about delighting user, users, let's say that you just got a large sum of money to your bank, or let's say that you and the bank approved a loan to you, which was something that you were expecting and anticipating. So that's a really good opportunity to celebrate and delight the user. Gotcha. So understanding the, the context of your users, if they're happy, if they're sad, if it's neutral and it's all about just performing a task, it's also something very important for UX writing because then you have an opportunity to delight the user or um, to, on the contrary, to take a very bad situation and make it slightly better, okay? All of us know this Windows, like old Windows by Microsoft, like error messages when, you know, I remember when I was a child, I didn't know how to operate. It was like error X412, delete, confirm, cancel, like it wasn't clear. And today you can see already in a lot of apps that uh, with companies that hired content designers, UX writers, you could see that it's all about helping the user. If there is an error, first of all, they don't blame the user with the way that mm. they write the app. Mm. They are very helpful. And they uh, give you solutions uh, that help you to solve that problem. So that's one more thing. Yeah. Achieve. It sounds like the biggest thing is understanding the user of your SaaS product and knowing where they're at at different stages in their growth or different stages that they use your product or tool and understanding how they would feel at each of those certain stages and then making their job or task or whatever they're trying to do a lot more simpler, a lot more easier and understanding their frustrations and helping remove those frustrations. So it's a lighter task without having to use their brain too much. So it sounds like there's so much work that goes into R and D, right? Research and development, like what a copywriter would do. How do you get that information? Like what, what is the, like before you go away and start tinkering with things, uh, inside a, you know, a software, inside a product, inside a membership, how do you go away and get that data that can equip you to confidently know what you need to change and make better? All right. So that's a great question. So now we're going to the fantastic field of user research, UX research. Under the umbrella of UX, you have also UX researchers, people that work in companies as UX researchers, but we don't always have the luxury to have a UX researcher. So we need to do and perform some research methodologies. Obviously we could look in the data as it is, like check out the funnels and look on the user flows. If it's, even if it's an e-commerce store, we can look on Google analytics and see 
on every step of the way, what was the dropout rate and try uh, to learn uh, from it, even though it's a bit more uh, complicated. The type of uh, users that I, uh, the type of research that I support heavily would be talking to people. So talking to your users, talking to your customers, listening to their pain points, but most importantly, pay attention to the way that they describe their problems. So they would like people that really like certain to... adjectives and certain words that you would actually be able to use in your language and copy when you are explaining a task to them right definitely definitely um there's this um term uh, that we've coined at the ux writing hub we call it conversation mining so we analyze the way our users talk not only to us but to each other so let's mm. say that um, we're building this surfing app right now and i'm not a surfer myself but i'm the ux writer of this company that building a surfing app so i would like to learn how you jerry talk to your you know to your surfing buddies <laughs> yeah and and how do you talk about surfing when you talk about equipment yeah. and the type of i don't know tricks that you can perform how do you talk about basically everything and what are your pain points uh, yeah. when for example even watching live streams like what are you looking for or when yeah. you're playing um this game of uh, um, fantasy league of, of surfing. So what exactly are you looking for? Uh, and then deliver you this type of wording in a way that would make sense to you in the way that will look familiar to you mm -hmm. as a user. So that's something that I really like to do. Conversation mining, talking to people, talking to my teams and asking yeah. them even for feedback, write something yeah. and say, hey, does this copy make sense to you? Yeah, and, it's uh, not, the last thing you want to do is open an app around a certain type of sport, say surfing, and have that app creator and designer use language that is not universal in the surfing world. <laughs> uh, because exactly. you just would know straight away that this is not not created by surfers and it's not for surfers uh, and it would, it's not worth being on. Whereas if you can connect, use the same language as people, then you feel like a part of it, which I think is super important, right? 100%. So that's uh, one thing to, to communicate with your users in a way that would make sense to them and wouldn't feel like it's attached, you know, from what they're already used to. There's also one thing, something in user experience called Jacob's law. People would perform better with experience that they already used to. For example, the Tinder swipe is a very good example of like, a design pattern that people really find useful. So for example, in the UX writing hub, we help this company to connect with parents of uh, children with special needs. By the way, it's an Australian based company. Their name is uh, Kanship. For example, parents wanted to find other parents in their location. So that company used also the exact design pattern that Tinder have in order to find people around them. So people are really, really comfortable with using experience that they feel familiar uh, with. So one very important research methodology is competitor analysis. Yeah. For example, if I was building this streaming surfing app right now, I was looking on maybe Twitch, which is a yeah. live stream for gamers. I will analyze like the design pattern that works really well, like the rating and you know, all of those to see like what makes sense for the Twitch user. And then I would see like, okay, is there a design pattern for this like billion dollar company that might work for my small surfing mm -hmm. app? I'm not sure it's that small, but you know, it's probably smaller than Twitch. So, so competitor analysis basically, and, and looking not only on your direct competitors, which is like other surfing app. But comparing yourself to other streaming services, looking at Disney Plus, YouTube, mm. and and Netflix. other places, and social media, yeah, Netflix, and try to build some kind of a idea about like what would work well for your base of users. Mm. It's not specific for UX writing, but uh, it's important to to do these kind of things. Yeah, awesome. So, a you you're saying a UX writer is also a UX designer? Is that right? So. Does the person who do, does all the research, competitive analysis, competitive research, research into uh, the language, the lingo, how that particular market or niche would communicate, do they, does that person do 
all of the tasks or is there people in the department that do different different parts of the task tasks so the product team have usually a product manager that is in charge of uh, probably taking business ideas and 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 building features uh, with their product teams in that product team you have also developers people that are techies building code and so on software front end uh, back end full stack and so on you have the ux designer that is the owner of the user experience and the visual and you have the ux writer which is the owner also of like the whole experience of the app mm. and but is in charge of it, or she in charge of the words and communication and some teams have the luxury to have a ux researcher or a research team uh, that could help them out with their research tasks now every person in that product team have different type of specific research that they need to do the developers need to do research that related to you know, like r d and uh, what language do sh should they use what coding language the designers also we do their own research a lot of time and uh, that might have overlap with the ux writers research like the competitor analysis and the user interviews but they would probably ask different questions they wouldn't care much about the linguistics aspects of it and type of words that they should use because that's the responsibility of the ux writer mm. so let's say that you work for google as a ux writer yes you have plenty of data of research teams that will do the research for you and you could submit them specific research tests that related to the writing. And if you don't have the luxury to work for a big company such as Google, you would probably have to perform that research um, yourself. Love it. Awesome. That's cool. Where, if people are interested in learning how to do some UX writing and UX design, you help people do that. Where should we send people to find out more about what you do there and and where they can find you on social media. All right, so um, you can just look the UX Writing Hub uh, on Google or check the uxwritinghub.com. We have a free course and we've built a very big community for UX writers. Uh, we've been there at the very beginning of this uh, interest industry a few years ago. So uh, one of our agendas is, is to create a lot of free content for anyone that is interested in UX writing. So check out the free UX writing course that we have on our website, but we have also a very active blog that we update on a weekly basis and a podcast named Writers in Tech, where I interview all of the leaders of this industry, industry from the biggest companies in the world, a weekly newsletter where we update what, whatever going on in this industry and how it's evolving. Yeah. And we create a lot of, you know, content for, for the community, like salary surveys and giving people more ideas and data about uh, where we're heading. So check it out. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Yuval Keshtecher, uh, just add it to the show notes. And I'd love to answer your questions if you have any. Yeah. Thanks so much. There'll be links to that in the show notes, guys. For everybody listening, thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you. Hey YouTube watcher, if you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out, it's an awesome playlist, you'll enjoy it.